very grateful for my family. You know, it hasn't been easy, but I mean, there's a lot of good times that we've had, and I just wanted them to know that I'm so grateful for what they've given me. My grandfather for just being at all my games. I mean, if you couldn't, like, it kills him, you know? Again, you know, she's just the most supportive. She loves me to death. I mean, it's undeniable how much love she has for me. And, and then to my mom, she, you know, she's just a real hardworking woman, but she's strong, you know? And I just want to make sure I show gratitude for them because where I'm at now, I'm no, I'm, I want to be here if it wasn't for them. And I'm just, that's important that they know that. What do you say after that? <laughs> <laughs> If you ask any of my teammates, they know I'm, I'm ripping the 954 pretty hard. Specifically, Broward County in South Florida. You know, I don't, I don't claim the rest of the part of Florida. You know, I'm not a, Say that. I'm not a Central Floridian. <laughs> I'm not no. I just, I really, if, if I want to take it, I think the rest of the state would be trying to imitate South Florida. But that's just me, though. That's just me. You know, I always rep where I come from really hard just because, you know, I pay a lot of respect uh, to the people that were here before me. I love where I'm from. You know, I think we're just different than anybody else. And I just try to really embrace it and show it um, my personality through every day to my friends, to my family that are not from here. You know, not many people get experience to a melting pot of cultures, you know, and South Florida gives you that opportunity. So I just feel like there's no better place here in America. So if you want to have a good time, you want to have the best time, man, come to Brad County, come to South Florida, and we'll show you a good time. Uh, so we're going to head out to my high school, NSU University School. We're going to check out my man, Coach Luke. When I tell you, when you meet him, he's the real deal. You know, he's a real loving guy. Um, so I, I'm excited to, you know, come go see him. I haven't seen him in a long time either. Uncle Luke. Yo. Yo. What's up, man? What's up, man? Yeah. Oh, good, man. Curly's. I like that. Hey, you with it? What's up, mom? Hey, how are you? Mm. Good to see you. Uh, always. Well, yeah, you had the grassroots. This is where it really all started for my man right here. Seventh grade. So, you know, I don't know if you know that the, 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 his original nickname is, is, is Big Griff, which is like Blake Griffin. You know, the basketball player. That was exactly what he looked like. He had the red hair. It was a lot more brighter than yeah. what it is now. Yeah. Light skin, br uh, red hair. And he was, like, very tall and lean. So we thought he was going to be, like, a tight end defensive end. We didn't know what he was going to be. And then all of a sudden, man, this dude grew two inches or three inches and gained 50 pounds. Man, this dude looks good. Like, <laughs> what are you even doing? I just remember also, too, that as good as he looked, I couldn't give him the first string reps right away. So I had the guy that was with me all summer getting the first, and he just kept jacking up, man. And I threw Marcus in there, and really at the, after the first time, Marcus never relinquished that right tackle spot. First four-year player I ever had start for me all four years in high school at the offensive line position. So that's what makes him the greatest one to ever come out of this school. So. Welcome to Auto Nation Field. This is where we used to beat everybody every weekend. I mean, I, we, I have some stories out here, man. I mean, I remember we playing Gulliver, and they got a defense alignment. And he's on the other side, like, talking. He was talking all week and on social media, everything. I'll talk back to you on the field, and I do talk my stuff on the field. But, like, before then, like, you're not going to hear from me. And it's a playoff game. We're talking the whole game. Dog them. Dog them. The whole game. We beat them boys by, like, four touchdowns. I mean, if you want to talk about it in my life, it's football. I mean, I live it. I breathe it. I mean, you don't say I sleep it. Like, it's just all football for me now, and I'm just so blessed to play it at the level, especially at the university that I played for. You know, Barkins is a three-time All-State, first team. A three-time first team all Broward County here. We always talk about being about that football life. People don't want to be here on Saturday, man. They're like, well, you're about that life, you're going to come out here and you're going to get this technique work because we got to get you better, we got to get you better fast. And I remember Marcus called me on a Sunday. He said, Coach, man, I'm bored, man. He said, man, I want to get some work in, man. You about that life? And I looked at him, I was like, Okay, because he tried me. He basically tried me. I said, all right. And guess what? We, we ended up we ended up having a session. It was just me and him. It was probably about 98 degrees. Yeah, hot. There it is. Look. <laughs> That's it. That's Marcus right here. Just working on technique. That was on April 7, 2019. Yeah, but yeah, man, that's that's the kind of work ethic that he had, man, and he was gonna hold you to it if you was about that life like that. So I, I stopped what I was doing. I came over here, man, and we got some working. Yeah, about your girls and everything. Yeah, man, yeah. brought my girls and everything over here. 
I don't care who it is lined up across me. You know, you got to see me when we get on the field. And that's just how the mentality I'm trying to, you know, instill into the rest of the offensive line. Because I ain't going to lie, it gets thrown in our face, you know, how good, you know, the D-line is and stuff like that. And I'm trying to see what that's about. They got to show me that, you know what I'm saying? That's how, that's the mentality I go to when I'm going into practice there. Obviously, you know, they are really good. And, you know, it's definitely a blessing to go against, you know, top draft picks in the NFL draft every year on the defensive line. And that's the biggest reason why I picked to go to Clemson because I know every day competition was going to be there. But I'm trying to, you know, make a name for myself too and show that I can hang out, I can hang with anybody. And I'm trying to get the rest of the unit to feel the same way. And I think that's where we're headed right now, for sure. This is Central Park right here. I mean, it got everything. If you want to play football, basketball, soccer. To me, this is your childhood. Yeah, this is where I grew up most, most for the most part, though. I mean, this is where my bus stop was for middle school and elementary school. I walk out there every morning and just wait for the bus. It's been so long, girl. Oh my goodness. Good to see you. I say, funny story about all us. You see, I'm the tallest now. Oh. But growing up, he was the baby. She was the tallest. Then it was him. And then I think we were about the same. It might have been about the same height. She never was the tallest. Yeah. yeah. Us three went to the same elementary school. Yeah, we went to the elementary, yeah. Joey and I's older brother dated his older sister. So. That's also how all of our yeah. families kind of got together. Yeah. It was like it was destiny, yeah, honestly. Right. And we've just always stayed close as we've gotten older. Yep. Run these hills for workouts. That's why I can introduce the hard work. Uh -huh. Running up, up and down the side. Yeah, since day one, we've been like family, honestly. And even when I went to college and when he went away and you know, we don't see each other as much as we used to. Like he always checks in, always gives me a text every holiday, make sure that I'm good and I do the same with him because he's a brother to me. So it's all, it's what it's all about honestly, is like keeping, staying with your roots and knowing who you came up with and you know, never forgetting that. So that's what's important to us, so. The big, I would say the number one thing that lights my fire is this uh, fellowship with my friends and family. Just being around people that love me and have my best interests has always been something that's, you know, got me fired up. Cause I just enjoy people. I enjoy conversations, especially, you know, deep conversations. You know, you can't, you can't really imitate that with anything. You know what I'm saying? That's the realest thing I feel like there is, is human interaction. And we used to play Madden 12 and NCAA all the time. All the time. And we would create our own players. And the way we used to decipher uh, how fast or how strong we was, was how many push-ups you could do was how strong you was yeah. and how fast you got to the door and back to the couch. Oh, that's how we, that's how, and then, and then, that's how we determine how good our player was. Like you literally see like Bro. two big kids yeah. just running to the door and running back. Y'all should run it back. Y'all should run it back now. Yeah. I'm interested to see. Run, run to the door. <laughs> we'll run it back. We'll run it back. <laughs> And I think for like a lot of my closest teammates, if you ever wonder where like I get my trash talk from and why I'm so excessive about it, this is where it comes from. First shot. Hey, first shot. Hey. Hey, kill like that, man. Hey, kill like that, man. <laughs> hey, that's how you feel. When you're a college athlete and you play, especially at football, especially at like Clemson and a big school like that, it kind of becomes your personality and stuff. But Marcus is so much more than just football. He's creative, he's compassionate, you know, he's very mindful and I can have a, a conversation with him about anything and he'll give me his opinion, he'll be honest and that's what I respect the most about him. Of course. Oh, Marcus is an old soul now. Marcus should have been, I think Marcus should have been growing up around my time or just before. Playing a little Tupac, you know, a little Camp Low or something. What's that, what's, that, what's that, Pistol Black? <laughs> so, so Pistol Black was a fictitious rapper name that I, that I made up here. So that's like, you know, people say, yo, you heard that Pistol Black? He was like, oh yeah, and it ain't no Pistol Black, but we used to mess with them. People were like, oh yeah, I think I did hear the Pistol Black. If something about me, I'm a big fan of my mother and everything that she do. Um, and when I was a kid growing up, you know, on Saturdays we would clean, well, her and my sister would clean. She would blast in this music this every weekend. My mom was a big fan of um, a Tupac, because, you know, Tupac loved his mom a lot too. 
she would play a lot of Keisha Cole. I, that's why I said I heard the most. Her and Faith Evans. That, that was those are my mom's favorites. Tamia, and I just fell in love with the music from there. And I credit that to my mom. She always loved playing this music, and um, I, just, I take that after her. Love you every day. Every day. Every time I go, especially to home games, which I think are absolutely my favorite, um, I always just think about when he was younger and I would tell him, like, I'm going to scream and cheer so loud for you right now because one day you're going to play in a stadium and you're not going to be able to hear me. And I want you to know that I am cheering for you even in those crowds. So for that to actually happen, and I feel like almost every game we make eye contact. Like some sort, he looks for us in the stadium. He knows how proud I am of him, you know, and and, and he's, he's doing and living his best life. But it, there's just no explanation for how it feels. Yeah, so I always like, I like to put him on as a superhero. Now, she's still human, and I, I you know, sometimes I forget that. But I mean, she's my backbone. She's, she, she sacrificed so much for me and my sister, you know, doing it on her own. And that's not easy, you know, and I, I just commend her so much. And she's such a strong woman. I, I just like to say I'm just very proud of her, if anything. Um, and for her to give me the life that I had, knowing that she she didn't get to see a lot of that, I, I just couldn't thank her enough. And, you know, I, I walk with purpose, and her purpose is to make sure that she feels good in life. So, you know, I, hopefully I can make that dream come true. I just want to shout out my nephew. Um, I know he ain't gonna understand what's going on right now, but you know, when you get older, man, I just wanna say, like, you know, you give me life, man, and um, I'm so grateful for you and the life that you give my, me and, uh, and our family. Another two people I wanna shout out, I wanna shout out my sister, um, just for, you know, all the things that she's going through, you know, she stays strong through it, and I would just say that uh, I appreciate, you know, growing up, always watching and having my back. And to my grandmother, I mean, always been over the top of how she loves, how she loves me and my sister. And I have a few things out but I'd like to show you what I have of his. <laughs> this is my Marcus's high, um, high school championship football. And this is his championship basketball. And I got my little cups and this is his Clemson football most improved defensive player of the year. And there's Marcus's trophies up there and all his little things. I am proud of this boy. I am very proud of this boy. Success for me is, does my success impact others? You know, I just want to be impactful in my community, impactful to my teammates, impactful to my family. And there's always been a fire there that's always kept me motivated to want to help people who struggle, who look like me. Um, and that's always been my mission is to change the world. And, um, you know, that's really what keeps me going. You know, I, I use football as a platform to, you know, create change. and. That's, that's something that I will, you will see me do. I will create some change in this world. And I don't know if I can do it for everybody, but I, I'm trying. And uh, I just can't wait to see what I can do with the platform that's gonna be given to me. You know, I'm very blessed to have it. And I just, I couldn't be more thankful to be living my, my dream now. I just a basketball player. That's why we call him Blake Griffin. We thought he was gonna be dunking and all that. Man. I'm still dunking though. Nah, <laughs> nah, we're not dunking donuts and cookies, man. That don't count. <laughs> hey, chill off me. Chill off me. I just gave.